Hello everyone, this is Robert, and in front of me I have both of the completed Copperhead robots. Um, in a few days we're going to be driving out to California to go fight these on BattleBots, which will be airing on Discovery Channel later this year. So in this video I wanted to give you a little bit of an overview of everything that's changed, uh, what we fixed, what we left the same, so you can get a better idea what to expect in the next season of BattleBots. For the 2020 version of Copperhead, we decided to focus strictly on what things didn't work in the previous season. You know, what failures we had, what was a problem, what didn't work the way it was supposed to. So we just simply focused on that. So if you're looking at these two robots, other than some of the paint and aesthetics, you might be thinking that they look very similar and you would be right. The drive system is largely the same. The frame is the exact same that we had last year. The drums are the same, but there's a lot of little changes that we made throughout the bot to make sure that those things worked properly. This this year and we didn't have any weird embarrassing glitches so we basically ironed out all the details so let's kind of dive right in and start talking about the weapon system and all the improvements to the drum in terms of the actual weapon drum, we're using the same ones as last year. These are 50 pound machined hunks of S7 tool steel, and these are the same. However, we are using a different weapon shaft. The previous one was just some kind of steel that was only case hardened. These are fully hardened S7. So these are the same material as the weapon drum itself. So that should help prevent any issues there. The other big change to the weapon system is we actually went with a completely different type of pulley system, a completely different wind on the motor to make it spin a lot faster, and then reduce that down. Let me explain. The previous pulleys look like this. Well, they are this. These are um, V-belt pulleys. You have this one mounted to the drum and this one mounted on the motor. And as you can see, they're pretty much a one-to-one -one ratio. One spin of the motor equals one spin of the weapon drum. The new ones are quite a bit different. These are V-belt, or well, serpentine belt rather, and you've got this one on the drum, and you've got this little tiny guy on the weapon motor. Now, typically you can't do this small of a pulley with a V-belt, uh, just because of the way V-belts work. You can't get that bend radius out of it. So we went to this different profile to accommodate this ratio. So even though the motor is spinning quite a bit faster, our top end speed is about the same. Now we did this so that we get a lot more low end torque out of it. The motor will start spinning a lot faster and it will slowly start to spin up this drum. So we get a lot better control at the low end of the drum. But because of this new profile, which as you can tell is a lot more susceptible to damage, we had to end up adding a belt guard. Belt guards are just generally a good idea. This is made out of the exact same material as the frame. It's actually cut from the exact same piece. And this belt guard wraps completely around the whole pulley. And there's maybe only about a one and a half or two inch gap right here where the belt is visible and maybe a tiny bit on the underside, but this is fully protected. So the drum will spin about the same speed, maybe a few percent higher or faster on the top end, but it will get up to speed a lot quicker, and partially that is in thanks to HFI. HFI stands for High Frequency Injection, and quite simply it takes a high frequency noise from the controller and injects it into the actual weapon motor, and by doing this it can actually track the change in that noise as the weapon drum moves along, Therefore, we can get a much more accurate position of where this drum is, and all of that translates to a much quicker startup time. Um, we might do a whole separate video on this, but basically, in layman's terms, it gives a better link between where the drum is actually positioned and where the motor is positioned so that we can spin up this a lot faster. Last year, we were at about a seven to nine second spin up time. I think um, nine second was um, pretty average. And this year we're running a four second spin up time. So less than half of what the spin up time was last year. And I'll tell you, it is absolutely terrifying. We do not have any more cogging issues. We don't have any more issues with it spinning backwards. You just turn it on and it starts spinning. And in four seconds, we're at full speed. It is fantastic and terrifying. In 
terms of the actual frame, we are using the same two frames that we had last year. One of the frames got damaged in the Kronos fight, and that one is actually gone, and it was not possible to be repaired. Uh, but we had the two backup frames that we are using. So those remain the same. But we did go through and add several pounds worth of welds to everything, so they're a lot more beefed up than they were last year. Any issues that we had with flexing or bending, um, we have more welds in there, so that should be good. In addition, a lot of the um, right angles have been filleted down or just ground down so that they're a little smoother. So let's say a blade comes across like this, it's going to hit a curved surface rather than the sharp surface that it had before, so possibly less chance of catching. Now, speaking of that Kronos fight, in the Kronos fight, the shell came along and hit the inside of one of the forks and actually bent that whole side out. Well, we have a solution for that this year, which is this huge bar. This is AR500, and it would actually get welded in between the forks just like that, which effectively ties these forks together, gives a little bit of a ramp up front so that the weapons can actually hit off of it and won't catch the inside of the forks and it actually creates a huge structural integrity between the two forks right here because they're physically welded together. We're not going to do this right now because once this is welded in place the bot cannot come apart anymore. We're going to do that as a last ditch effort um, if we face someone like you know um, Kronos again, Tombstone, things like that. Any big high powered horizontal we're going to tie these forks permanently together so that we don't have that issue again. The top armor plates are all new this year. The previous versions were quarter inch AR400 and these new plates are quarter inch AR500. And that is 100 more, so you know it's better. Um, AR500 is just a little bit tougher and a little bit durable and a little bit more hard, so the AR500 should do better against any overhead attacks. However, if we do have an overhead um, attack like let's say Beta or possibly Chomp, we have a little hole here that is a provision for a support that runs the whole length of the bot. So we can support it right there. We just don't have it in place because it's a little bit heavy and adds a little bit to the weight. But we do have the two quarter inch plates. And then in addition to the center support, we also have a 3 8 inch plate that we can throw on top. And that weighs, you know, another five pounds or so. But we can have the much thicker plate if we're fighting someone like Beta or Chomp. I'm not going to go into a lot of details about the new pre-charge circuit because I have a whole separate video about that, but we got rid of the button for the pre-charge circuit and now it is automatic just by putting the hex key into the back of the bot, so that makes it a lot nicer. Here is a look at the beautiful underside of Copperhead with the um, gorgeous rust patina, and you can see that we've added some mounts on the bottom. These are mounts for magnets. With BattleBots changing up the floor this year, now we can actually use some really high-powered magnets to pull the bot down closer to the floor. We don't have these magnets mounted for many different reasons. One of them is they're extremely dangerous and you just don't want them on the bot. And for that reason, I'm not going to be showing you what they look like on the bot. But I have a little 3D printed example, sits in like that, has a large magnet that sits inside of there, and that is what sucks it down to the floor to give you more traction. So what I can do is show you the actual magnet assembly. So let's go take a look at those. Because these magnets are very strong, we have a special little packaging tube for them um, just to keep everything nice and safe. So let me just turn this upside down. So this is the um, packaging for all six of our magnet pods. You can see them inside of here and we just have 3D printed spacers. So if I take off one of these, I can remove one magnet assembly, slide that away. And this is what one of the magnet pods looks like. Inside of this aluminum block, there is a 50 by 30 millimeter N52 magnet. And the pull force on this when it is touching a surface is going to be 275 pounds, give or take. So 275 pounds worth of force. And as that gets further and further away, it will decrease from there. And we can actually adjust this with shim. So we can go, I think, um, you know, down like an eighth of an inch all the way up to like three eighths or half inch or something like that. 
Generally speaking, we can go anywhere between 50 pounds of downforce per magnet up to about 150 pounds. So we can gain anywhere between 200 and 300 pounds worth of downforce by using these magnets. Of course, they do have some downsides to them. Um, this is a great way to get high sided, get bolts and you know other debris stuck onto them. But in the right match, these can be a nice little lifesaver. I think we've got two more things to talk about. And the first one is we basically went through every screw, every nut, every bolt and made sure it had proper thread engagement. Uh, we had some issues with the um, weapon bolts here not being long enough, not having you know just enough threads to engage. So those got longer. Same with the sprocket to the wheel. Those were really short, so we made those longer. Basically just kind of beefed up everything all the way around in terms of all of the fasteners just to make sure that nothing backed out and nothing had an issue. And lastly, under the theoretical hood, all of the electronics are fully battle hardened this year. Uh, we didn't do it last year because quite frankly, there's a lot of complexities to it, but all of the ESCs were fully opened. There is a special thermal epoxy that we used on the inside, so we shouldn't have any more issues with components getting sheared off and rattled around from the huge hits that we're experiencing. So all of the electronics have been fully rebuilt and battle hardened, so we shouldn't see that as an issue anymore. Overall, I think we're very proud with how this version of Copperhead turned out. This is going to be an interesting season to say the least, but it gave us a good distraction. We put a lot of effort into this version of it, and I think we have everything ironed out. I think this is the Copperhead that we were wanting to bring last year. And at the end of the day, I'm not sure if we're going to win or not, but I think we're going to have a lot of really good fights, and I think there's always going to be something interesting to watch when Copperhead's in the box. And of course, we can't talk about this new version of Copperhead without talking about the new aesthetics. With everything that's going on in 2020, we thought it'd be kind of nice to go with this post-apocalyptic feel. So we stripped the old frame down completely. We just sandblasted all the old paint off of it and then used a salt and vinegar solution to kind of etch the metal. And then you go back in and use a hydrogen peroxide solution to actually do all the rusting. So this is all controlled rusting that's on here. And then everything else, all the um, paint details was added um, actually by my wife. She hand painted everything. And we really like that kind of, um, you know, almost comic book or cartoon feel to it. Uh, I think it's going to look really nice on TV and we think it turned out really cool. And of course the most important part of the robot is the back where we have all of our sponsors. Building a BattleBot is one of the most challenging and complicated things I've ever done. It's almost demoralizing at times how difficult it is to think of every single last little detail. And in addition to it being very complicated, it's also incredibly expensive. So these sponsors are the ones that make this possible. You wouldn't be watching my channel and you wouldn't be watching BattleBots without these sponsors. So thank you to everyone on here, eGage Systems, Rocky Mountain Wire Jet and Laser, LNL Fabrication, and Avid CNC. These are the companies that make this bot possible. So thank you.